So this is a story all about how I left academia to become a science writer. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing the French Prince of Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> intro. Hey there, I'm Dr. Gertrude Nontra on this channel. I make videos around slaying grad school and navigating the career world after the fact. If that sounds exciting to you, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so how I became a scientific writer. If you watch this video right here, I talked about why I left academia. Academia was a dream for me for a really long time. Uh, and I talk about why I left. Still love academia, don't have anything against it. Maybe one day I go back. But right now in this season, I am a scientific writer and I'm loving it. And usually I get a lot of questions in my inbox, especially on LinkedIn about how I came, became a science writer, my path to science writing. So I wanted to share that in today's video. So the story really starts in 2015. In 2015, I graduated from my PhD and I moved from Philadelphia, PA to San Diego, California. And if you've lived in either one of these cities, or if you've lived in both cities, then you will know that the standard of living is completely different in these two cities. It's much more expensive here in San Diego, California. And so when we moved here, I realized very quickly that I needed to make some extra money on the side of my job, okay? So I actually had started a blog about um, a year or so before I had finished my PhD. The blog was beginning to do quite well. Um, I was beginning to get affiliate commissions, Google AdSense. So they were like, there was a little bit of income coming in. And so what I ended up doing is leveraging that blog to do social media of all things, to handle social media for a group of businesses here in San Diego. So I was just creating social media posts and posting it to their social media for them advertising their businesses. So I did that for about a year and a half. And then somewhere in 2017, I learned about freelance writing. So when I learned about freelance writing, I was super excited because I'd always enjoyed writing. And besides, I was always writing these social media posts. And I was also writing some blog posts for these clients of mine that I had already gotten in my side business. So I was like, huh, I think I would love to move away from doing social media to actually writing content just writing content for other people and get paid. So right around that time, I found a course and it was a course by a, a phenomenal writer called Holly Porter Johnson. She had a course on freelance writing. She'd been doing it for about four or five years. So I, I trusted her. So I took the course. I learned so much from the course. And if you're interested, I'm going to leave a link to the course below. And the course paid for itself within about two or three months after I took that course. So it really was helpful. So I began to have clients in the personal finance space. I wrote um, product descriptions. I wrote blog posts as a point. I wrote social media content and also email uh, marketing content for a physician practice. So I had a wide range of clients. And so for about a year, I was writing for all these types of clients and I was making good money, right? Really good money on the side of my job as a postdoc. Come 2018, I did lose my job as a postdoc and but by this time I was pretty established as a freelance writer so it wasn't super hard for me to like quickly get on my feet and ramp up my writing so that it would support my family so I kept on writing for this while somewhere in 2020 at the beginning of 2020 I got a job as an adjunct faculty and I had been writing throughout this time from 2017 to 2020 I was still writing and then at late 2020, I found on LinkedIn, I saw somebody post and that somebody happens to be my director of content where I currently work. She had posted about an open role for a writer with a life and health science marketing agency. And so what ended up happening there is that I applied for the job and almost immediately she reached out to me and said, hey, you're your resume looks great and I want to talk with you. And we spoke at first, I didn't get the job, but then a few months later, a few weeks later, she, re she reached out back and said, another role has opened up. We were wondering if you would like to take on the role. I said, yes. And you know, here I am sitting. I accepted the job. I started in uh, January of 2021. It's currently the end of July, July 30th, as I'm filming this. 
and I've been writing since then. And so by landing this job as a writer, it did allow me to put behind or leave behind the academic dreams that I had. I was teaching at a community college a few courses per semester. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved the department I was in, but it just wasn't enough income for me and my family. So I did have to leave it behind and then focus on this writing full time. Now, there are a few lessons I want to share from my story that I think will be helpful to you if you are a PhD or even a PhD student listening to me. You're thinking about how you can step out of academia right so the first lesson here is that it's important for you to recognize which skills you obtained from your PhD so one of the very very strong skills a lot of PhDs have is writing and apart from my love for writing right I was able to hone some of those writing skills during my PhD so if you're planning and not this is not just for um, science scientific writing but for any field you want to go into whether that's consulting whether that's becoming a medical science liaison on whatever it is right find out the skills that are required for that job i made a post on linkedin the other day about like if you are if you, there's a certain job you have in mind go find the job go go to glassdoor or linkedin find the look for the job descriptions read them look at the skills that are required and go get those skills okay so because i knew that i really wanted to become a scientific and medical writer i knew that having writing skills was going to be important. When I found out about medical writing and when I decided I wanted to become a medical writer, this was way back in maybe 2015, 2016. And from that time, everything I did, I, I, I worked towards building my skills, right, towards that career. I already had the scientific background. I already had that scientific medical background, right? But what I really needed to prove to somebody that would take me on as a scientific or medical writer was that I had the writing chops. And so by having a freelance writing business, right, I was able to really talk authoritatively during my interview about my skills because I knew the skills that were required. I knew what it meant to do for instance search engine optimization i knew what it was like to write a marketing email i knew what it entailed to write a full on blog post right i knew these things so i wasn't going to be trained from scratch i was coming with these already acquired skills so you really want to take stock of the skills that you have right and see where they fit in the market your skills fit somewhere for me my skills definitely fit into the scientific medical writing career. And so I made sure to hone those so that I could be on that path. The second lesson is not to be afraid to start applying for these roles outside of academia. So I applied for many scientific and medical writing positions before I landed this one that I currently have. Okay. In all of them, I learned something. In all of them, I that I learned about what was required to become a scientific writer. Eventually, I got there. So if you've been applying for a certain role and you've been struggling and it seems like things are not working out for you, don't give up. Continue to hone in on your skill. Continue to build up your skill. The doors will open up for you. Do not despair. The doors will open up for you, okay? I promise. Take the time to also invest in yourself. Read books. Take courses. You can go to places like Udemy and Skillshare. I'm going to leave links to both of those places below. You can go there and you can find courses on just about anything, programming, you name it, everything that will help you get to where you want to get. Also, if you're a PhD student right now, a postdoc or still in the academy, I know that there are programs, sometimes there are um, mini MBAs, there are certain classes that are offered. Find out what is available to you at your institution. A lot of the time they're available to you for free or at a very reduced cost and you can take them along alongside what you're doing currently so that you can have those skills. I find that moving out of academia into a role that is well compensated and that you enjoy really has everything to do with identifying the skills you have and lining that up with what the market demand is.